always be Mo closing was a bit of a weird episode for me. It begins with a formula that made me think we were in for a pure hijinks episode. Bimo and Ice King finally enter into a relationship. A business relationship. Which is something that's sort of been hinted at a few times now. Not the two trying to sell crud, but the two hanging out and becoming close friends. The episode quickly takes a turn, however, when the two wander into Uncle Gumbald's lair, and at that moment, I wondered if the episode was going to do a complete shift in terms of episode type. However, it really did not. While it captured the feel of an overarching plot episode with its second half, that's simply because it's only the third time we've had an episode where we saw Uncle Gumbald directly. He's a brand new character who currently has a prominent role in the plot, and as such, any screen time he has this early on feels important by default. And yet, when you sit down and think about it, this episode really wasn't all that important. If it was entirely scrapped, we would be losing just one single crucial thing, which is Bimo acquiring Gumball's Silver Goblet through his sale, which PB will later notice, which will thus alert her that Uncle Gumbald has returned. Outside that, the rest of the events are essentially fluff, and as such, I would label this episode as 95% miscellaneous hijinks. And to be honest, if Adventure Time wasn't set to end in a dozen or so episodes, I could easily see how this sort of episode could become a new villain gimmick that could occur for several episodes. Uncle Gumbald comes up with some harebrained magical scheme to take out Finn, who he considers a major nuisance due to being Princess Bubblegum's most competent and reliable warrior, but it comedically fails while Finn and Jake wonder what the heck just happened and casually brush it off and go on about their lives as usual. This sort of formula is pretty typical for cartoons though, and would easily get tedious if it's done too much, so I certainly hope all future events with Uncle Gumbald hold a bit more importance than they did in this episode. Now I do have to mention, it's not like hijinks episodes can't be amazing. Adventure Time has had many such episodes that were an absolute blast. For example, I adore the episode Time Sandwich. Always Be Mo Closing fell more on the lukewarm side for me, though. The first half, I especially found lackluster. While Ice King and Bimo have good chemistry together, I just didn't care for their door-to-door -door adventure that much until Uncle Gumbald comedically showed up holding a fire axe. Salesman Bimo just didn't tickle my funny bone nearly enough, nor did tree trunks. There were two fun details around TT's house, though, one of huge importance, which is the missing poster of Crunchy. It's some major foreshadowing to revelations we find out in Bonnabelle Bubblegum. Obviously, I'll talk about that more in my eventual review of that episode. A detail that holds very little importance is that there's a carving on a tree outside TT's house, likely done by Wyatt, Tree Trunks' ex-husband. I'm surprised Mr. Pig hasn't crossed the carving out yet, unless Wyatt was being a creepy weirdo around TT's house and made the carving recently. So yeah, Uncle Gumbald being a goof in his lair was pretty fun, but we didn't learn anything we didn't already know. Meanwhile, back at the treehouse, Finn and Jake act as super supportive parents, but their honest expectations sure are low. I think my favorite line of this episode is probably how secretly savage Finn and Jake are as parents. Still, it's tough seeing your kid get his heart set on doing something he really sucks at. So the battle of this episode is one of the more weird ones Adventure Time has had. Finn and Jake end up having to murder an army of enamel Finn babies with baby-smashing sledgehammers. I do think there was a huge missed opportunity to hear Finn's buff baby song again. I'm a tough tootin' baby, I can punch all your buns. Punch all your buns, I can punch all your buns. It would have been way more awkwardly fun if the little tykes were all chanting this song in harmony as they broke into the treehouse and launched their assault. Alternatively, I think it could have created for a more interesting situation if the tooth fins reflected Finn at different ages. A human being's 20 baby teeth are usually lost between the ages of 6 and 12, so it would have been really cool if each tooth took on the form of Finn at the age she was when that respective tooth was lost. We could have seen an army of Finns at varying ages between 6 to 12, which would also give us a neat snapshot of how Finn physically grew during his childhood, as well as create a more dynamic battle for our heroes to have. Smashing children and preteens might not be as wacky as smashing babies, but it still counts as generalized child murder, right? If there's no buff baby song to be had, I would have much rather preferred tooth fins of varying ages. And that's about it. I don't have much else to say about this episode. It was fun at times, but overall I just didn't get quite enough enjoyment out of it, and we didn't really learn anything new about Uncle Gumbald as a character. The episode was just okay.
I'm a buff baby that can dance like a man. I can shake a my fanny. I can shake a my can.